for today's video we're going to take a look at a 1983 dictaphone DCX1 dictamation dictating and transcribing system model number 1874 if you've seen one of my previous videos where I looked at a 1973 dictaphone Ultravox you'll probably recognize this microphone that I bought when I was a kid in the hopes it would work with the Ultravox as it happened it didn't work with it so it got put away into storage anyway last year I happened to stumble across the correct machine to go with this microphone and here it is in all its glory the new machine actually came with its own microphone so my old one can just be a spare By 1983, Dictaphone was under the ownership of Pitney Bowes, better known for making franking machines and the like. The sound sheet recording medium of the Ultravox had been dropped in favour of cassette-based systems, and the bright colours of the 1970s machines was a thing of the past. As the name suggests, the DCX1 Dictamation Dictating and Transcribing System offered some relatively advanced features for the time, and the styling matched the new high-tech era of the 1980s. Looking at the controls, you've got the on or standby button, which will toggle between switching the unit on and putting it into standby. The telephone button will put it into telephone recording mode if you happen to have the optional telephone accessory. Conference will increase the sensitivity of the microphone for recording a group of people. And speaker will play through the internal speaker rather than through the microphone which doubles up as a speaker. If I press the reset button over here it will stop the counter flashing when you first turn it on and reset it to zero. If I press fast forwards, it'll fast forwards the tape until I press stop. And the same with rewind, I can rewind until I press stop. If I press erase and rewind, or erase and fast forwards at the same time, the tape will be erased. On the front you've got the volume slider, the tone, and the speed control. The speed control is only active when you're using the foot pedal. It doesn't have any effect when you're using the microphone. Another way to wake the unit up from standby is to simply lift the microphone out of the cradle and the unit will wake up and be ready for use. If I press and hold the record button, it will start recording so long as I keep the button held and you can see the red record light is on on the microphone. When I get to the end of my recording, I simply let go of the button and it ends the recording. If I now press the Q button, it will record an audible tone onto the tape, which will be used as a position marker for fast forwarding or rewinding later on. If I press the conference button, and then press the lock button on the microphone, it goes into record mode at a higher um, sensitivity, so I can just talk anywhere in the room and it should pick up what I'm saying. And that will carry on recording until I press the stop button. If I press and hold the rewind play button on the microphone it will now rewind the tape until it gets to the cue marker I put on the tape earlier at which point it will pause the rewind and if I then release that button it will play from that point and you'll notice while it's playing the green light on the microphone will be lit. goes into record mode at a higher um, sensitivity and it'll play until I press the stop button. Similarly I've got a fast forwards button so I can fast forwards the tape and as soon as I let go that'll stop. On the top of the machine there's an eject button which opens the door to the cassette. In my case my machine uses mini cassettes. We'll just have a quick look at the different formats of cassettes that are available for these. The DCX1 Dictamation system could be supplied to use standard compact cassettes, or mini cassettes, or even micro cassettes. Most of you will be fairly familiar with standard compact cassettes, so I'll move that one out of the way. But the mini cassette and micro cassette aren't that different in size. The best way to tell them apart is the mini cassette has two holes in the back corners and the micro cassette has three at the front edge where the actual tape is. 
A distinct advantage of using mini or micro cassettes is that they can be used in portable machines like this Dictaphone 1243 mini cassette recorder that we'll take a look at in a future video. Looking at the side of the machine, beneath the cradle for the microphone, you've got the input jack for the optional telephone recording device, the output for a headset for when you're listening to the dictations, and the socket that either takes the microphone or the optional foot pedal. There was only one mini cassette with this machine when I got it, and that one was completely blank. Sometimes you find some nice little time capsules on these things. So I bought another box of five, although there's only four in here for some reason. So I'll pop one of these in and see if there's anything on it. So I'll pop it on to play and see what happens. Dear Mr. Cunningham, Regarding your letter of the 8th inst, I'm very sorry to hear about the explosion and fire that destroyed your caravan and the injuries you received as a result. I understand your concern that faulty gas appliance in your caravan might have been the cause of the explosion, but following our thorough investigation and that of the fire service, it is believed that the build of the thing in the toilet cubicle was ignited by a naked flame such as that of a match. To this end, it is not the belief that windy corner caravans can be held responsible for the incident. I trust that you are continuing to recover from your injuries and would welcome you to return to our company should you wish to purchase a replacement caravan in the future. Yours sincerely, Derek Flutterbottom, Windy Corner Caravan. Ah well, at least there was something on it. I was kind of hoping for the account number of a Swiss bank account with many millions in it, but you can't have everything. When the boss has finished dictating, the secretary will usually listen to the recordings using headphones and control playback with a foot pedal. You have a play button in the middle, rewind on the right and fast forward on the left. The foot pedal plugs into the same socket as the microphone, so we'll just swap them over and then demonstrate the foot pedal. With the foot pedal plugged in, if I press the play button, the recording will start playing. When the boss has finished dictating, and if I let go, it will stop again. If I press fast forwards, it will fast forward. And if I press rewind, it will rewind, and it will keep going till it gets to the previous cue marker and then it'll pause, and then I can start playing again with the play button. When the boss has finished dictating, the secretary... The other thing we can look at is the speed control, so we'll give that a quick try now. We'll usually listen to the recording as using headphones and control playback with a foot pedal. You have a play button in the middle, rewind on the right, and fast forward on the left. The foot pedal plugs into the same socket as the microphone, so we'll just swap them over and then demonstrate the foot pedal. Like that. So I think the next thing to do is get the unit up to the workbench and take it apart, show you the insides, and also a couple of things I had to repair before the machine actually worked. OK, I've got the machine opened up on the workbench. You've got the power supply here and a couple of smoothing capacitors. The main circuit board takes up the entire base of the machine. The tape playing section is over here. You've got the play motor, which is running the whole time the machine is switched on, and the fast forward rewind motor. You've got three discrete seven segment LEDs for the tape counter. When the machine first came to me, it wouldn't play or rewind or anything like that. The rubber tyres that drive the tape had perished. I'll show you what I did to fix that next. To remove the tape playing section, there's four screws to take out, and plus it's also screwed directly to this circuit board here, so it has to come out with that as well. So we'll just get the rest of these screws out. That's that one, and that one, and that one. Just get these out of the way. Right, 
carefully ease the board out of the connector. There she goes. Ah yes, and there's one more socket to come out down here. And that's the tape play section out. Looking at the underside of the tape mechanism, it has an interesting fast forward rewind system. The drive motor for fast forward rewind drives this pulley, which in turn drives this pulley. There's a little bit of cord here that is wrapped round the shaft that goes down to the rubber wheel that drives either the take-up spool or the rewind spool. It's just a slip joint on the shaft, but it has just enough friction that if the motor turns one way, it'll wind along that cord until it engages with the drive tyre, and then in this case it's fast-forwarding the tape. If the motor is then reversed, it'll wind its way to the other end of that bit of cord and engage with the rewind tyre. Moving back to the other side of the machine, I've already removed the four screws that allow me to take off the base plate for the cassette here. And now you can see the take-up spool and the rewind spool. This is the little wheel we were looking at before that moves either towards the take-up for fast-forwards or this spool for rewind. The rubber tyre on the outside of this wheel had perished and gone all sticky, but I managed to find I'd got some spare fuel line from a Ryobi hedge trimmer that was exactly the right size to replace that. The rubber tyres on these two wheels were also completely perished and broken to pieces. That was a little more difficult to find replacement parts, so I actually made my own. We'll cut to a clip of that in a second. The tape play motor drives this little capstan here. When you press play, this solenoid is energised and it pulls the capstan against the take-up spool tyre, like this. This is what remains of one of the original drive tyres from the tape mechanism. And as you can see, if I squish it with the screwdriver, it just goes into a black paste, so that one's completely perished. There was enough of it left, though, to get the calipers onto it to check its outside diameter, and then once I removed it, I could measure the inside diameter from the wheel it fits onto. I usually keep various thicknesses of rubber sheet in stock, and I had some of the right thickness, so I cut myself some new tyres. The first thing I usually do is tape the rubber sheet down to my cutting mat. That stops it creeping when I'm cutting it with the compass cutter. So I'll just get some tape down here. And then I'll stick the rubber sheet down. So that's done. And I'll put that on about there. And then I use one of these uh, Alpha compass cutters to do the actual circle cutting. I always cut the outer circle first, followed by the inner circle. I've reset the cutter now to do the inner circle, or the bore of the actual tyre. It's a little more tricky the smaller diameter you're trying to cut, because it's not really what these compass cutters are meant for but it does the job okay. And now with a bit of luck, I should have a replacement tyre. So I've now got a spare for the machine. Another thing I spotted when I first opened this machine, there's a tantalum capacitor down here that's exploded. You can see it's sprayed debris over the side of the electrolytic here. I haven't checked the circuit to see what that one does, but I suspect it just does a bit of smoothing. I'll uh, get the circuit board out and replace that one sometime soon. One thing I haven't done yet on this video is see how the machine deals with music. So, well stick it on to record and crank up the music and see how it gets on. OK, 
Okay, that should do. We'll rewind that. And now I'll put the microphone, which can also act as a speaker, up near the camera and we'll see how it sounds. And crank up the music and see how it gets on. Yeah, that's actually quite reasonable. I think that's about all for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.